How long will it be before the Earth dies? The Earth's Cataclysmic Demise Consider that lovely muffin you baked the other day, or the coffee you've been longing for so long, you're on your final taste. The love you thought would last forever abruptly came to an end. Last but not least, you made it through the weekend only to be greeted with another Monday morning. The earth, like all things, will eventually perish. But how and when will this happen? Will we be able to witness it? Or will we be gone for good? Follow along in this video to learn more about it. Hello and welcome to Z. Faith of Shaquille O'Neal, the good news is that the earth still has many years until it expires. We have so much time ahead of us. So many people to come, so many trees to grow, and so many wet days to stay at home and do nothing. So for the time being, we don't have to be concerned about the fate of the earth. Indeed, on a human time scale, this is meaningless because it takes billions of years for a planet to die. There are numerous ways in which our planet and all that it entails could perish. External actors could, for example, suggest a supernova explosion, an asteroid bombardment like the one that wiped off dinosaurs, or a nuclear disaster. However, ignoring them from a purely solar system perspective, the Earth's religion is inextricably related to the Sun's faith. This is true for all other planets in general. Each planet's lifetime is determined by its host star. Around 5 billion years ago, the sun was formed by the collapse of a massive volume of clouds, and the Earth followed a little later. Our planet is currently thought to be 4.5 billion years old. Our sun is now in the middle of its existence, according to the most precise stellar evolution models. The sun is a middle-aged man in terms of a person's lifetime. This means that for the next 5 billion years or so, our star will continue to irradiate and dry your clothing hanging outside. Fast forward 5 billion years, and the sun will have very little to no material to burn in its core, and it will begin to implode. The stuff it will run out of is one of the most significant and abundant elements in the universe, hydrogen. Every second, billions of atoms of these elements are burned at the core of any main sequence star, and the energy produced by their fusion creates an outward pressure that counterbalances the star's gravity, pushing inward in the opposite direction. Gravity is responsible for the star's spherical shape, and it does everything it can to reduce the sun, but as long as the fusion of elements continues, the pressure from within prevents the star from collapsing. When the sun runs out of hydrogen, gravity takes hold and the sun begins to collapse. This will allow the sun to begin fusing heavier elements in its core, as well as some hydrogen left in a shell wrapped around the core. When this happens, the sun's temperature rises and the outer layers of the sun's atmosphere expand into space, engulfing Mercury, Venus, and the Earth. The red giant phase is what astrophysicists call this stage. However, don't get alarmed just yet, because the planet's positions may have shifted over 5 billion years before the sun becomes a red giant star. In truth, a planet's orbit is always changing, even if at a very slow rate, due to the minor perturbations caused by the sun, other planets, and things in the solar system. Even while these disturbances are minor, they can mount up over billions of years, resulting in the planet being in an entirely different orbit. To put it another way, we don't know if the red giant sun will actually swallow Mercury, Venus, and the Earth because the dynamics of the solar system are extremely complicated and thus difficult to understand. Precise predictions across billions of years require precision and accuracy that neither our models nor our technologies can provide. We say a planet migrates when it travels from its original place to a more distant or closer one. Planet migrations are increasingly being detected in exoplanetary systems that are in the early phases of creation. Furthermore, Jupiter and Saturn are assumed to have migrated before the solar system could achieve its current shape. Assume, however, that the planet's orbits do not alter. The Earth will then be enveloped by the red giant sun's massive envelope. 
This envelope will have a lesser temperature than the core, but it will be more than enough to demolish all coke enterprises, burn all woods, and extinguish life on Earth. Not even Shaquille O'Neal will be able to survive. The Cool White Dwarf The sun will eventually cool down and shrink to the size of a white dwarf. In comparison to their red giant phase, white dwarfs are now quite small. They're like a miniature form of a star. They are also among the densest objects in the cosmos. They don't generate any energy, instead, they simply cool down by expelling all of the heat they accumulated during their earlier life phases. But here's the interesting bit. When the sun turns into a white dwarf, it will not be alone. Oh no, it will be accompanied by a planetary nebula. Consider this, multicolored clouds surround our tiny white dwarf star. It's like looking at a cosmic picture. Many astronomers and astrophiles like photographing planetary nebulae. These planetary nebulae are breathtaking. If you were lucky enough to watch the sun during this period, with a telescope, of course, you would witness these incredible clouds comprised of star material. It's basically everything the star said in its final moments. Talk about leaving a shambles. You may be wondering if the sun will ever become a black hole. Don't worry, my friend, that won't happen. The sun is simply too huge to collapse into a singularity. So there will be no black hole drama for our sun. That's all there is to it. The sun's future appears to be promising. It's going to shrink down, cool off, and have a great time with its planetary nebula companions. Isn't space awe-inspiring? There will be no more Nutella. Let us review. Scientists believe that the red giant phase will occur in around 7.5 billion years. This is the stage during which a star, such as our sun, begins to expand like a gigantic balloon. The planets closest to the star, such as Mercury, Venus, Earth, and maybe Mars, will be toast during this event. Get rid of those rocky planets. But what about the planets beyond Earth? Things aren't looking good for them either. The star may evaporate or blow away gas giants such as Jupiter and Saturn. Only the inner cores of Jupiter and Saturn may survive. As a result, if this occurs, our solar system will be irreversibly altered. It will no longer be the chic neighborhood it once was. It could resemble a zombie solar system with destruction and silence all around. Think about how sad that is. It's as if our solar system ceased to be the center of the universe and became just another location in the universe. Our solar system, the sole creator of Nutella in the cosmos, will never be the same. And it will never be as tasty as it once was. Alright, if you like the video, please like it and click the bell button so you don't miss any of our daily videos. The planet is made of lava. The bad news doesn't end there. The Earth will become uninhabitable before being devoured by the Sun. To see why, consider how the Sun shines. As the Sun burns through hydrogen, its brightness increases over time. It was 70% less luminous when it initially developed than it is now, which is pretty amazing, right? According to some calculations, the Sun's brightness increases by around 1% per 100 million years. This may appear gradual to us, but its impacts are visible over longer durations. The sun will be 10% brighter in a billion years than it is now. Without taking into account global warming, this would elevate the average temperature of the Earth to a searing 122 degrees Fahrenheit, 50 degrees Celsius. In reality, however, things are more uncertain due to the numerous elements of human impact that are difficult to account for. When global temperatures reach those extreme highs, the oceans rapidly evaporate, producing water vapor that exacerbates the greenhouse effect. This destructive cycle will raise the temperature even higher, forcing all of Earth's water reservoirs to evaporate at a faster rate. Earth will eventually resemble Venus, hot, with a dense atmosphere and a powerful greenhouse effect. Most living species, including humans, will find it inhospitable. In this harsh climate, only small organisms such as bacteria may survive. 
In 3 billion years, the average temperature on Earth would reach a searing 302 degrees Fahrenheit, 150 degrees Celsius, making any kind of life impossible. Even the most resilient organisms will disappear, leaving behind a world formerly covered with oceans and rich flora. By 4 billion years, the Earth's crust will be so hot that it will melt. An astronomer witnessing this would see a lava ball of a planet with no prospect of life. They would have no idea that this planet formerly housed a diversity of species, including humans. Alright everyone, this video has come to an end, thanks for watching. What else would you like us to cover in the upcoming videos? Please let us know in the comments.